Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, let's do some more reference angle work. Um, so there was one in on the 2015 paper, question five, uh, paper two, sorry, I should have paper two there. Um, Part A was uh, proving one of the identities. I, I'm going to do that because it's just part of the question. And part B then is more practicing of the reference angles and unit circles and stuff we were doing. OK, but 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 let's start with this one, which there's there's a number of, of trig identities you have to prove on your as part of your course. And this is one of them. Um, and I want to explain to you, I suppose, how I do it. Um, I, I'm not very good at remembering formulas. I don't remember stuff off by heart. I was never any good at poetry or quotes or any of that because I just don't like learning stuff off by heart. Um, so I found a way that um, I suppose I didn't have to do that. So the first thing I do is I expand out tan of A plus B. So I don't work on the right hand side. I work off the left hand side. OK, so tan of anything and for the log tables, page 13, tan of anything is sine over cos. OK, so tan of an angle, angle A in this case, is sine of the angle over cos of the angle. OK, so if I have tan of A plus B, then I can write that as the sine of A plus B over cos of A plus B. OK, a sine over cos, yeah. OK, and... I need to somehow make this become tans, okay? So is there um, a trig identity that would allow me expand out sine of A plus B? Okay, so I'm in here, I just flicked on a page onto, you, you know, you have two pages here um, of, of different identities. So basically there are just different ways of writing angles. OK, and I see sine of A plus B. There's one here, sine A cos B. I'm just looking down to see, is there any other one? No. So that looks like a good one. So there's sine A plus B. There cos A plus B. So it's a sine A cos B, cos A sine B. OK, so sine A plus B is sine of the first angle cos of the second angle plus sine of the second angle cos of the first angle. Just make sure I have that right. Sine A cos B cos A sine B. I do not have it right. I invented a pattern. Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Okay. Over. Now I have cos A plus B on the bottom, so I'm going to take the top line. Cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. That one's easier to remember. Cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Okay, um, right. So that's the first bit. You write him as sine over cos and you expand them out. Now, this is how I remember the next bit. So it's the number one here on the bottom. So I ask myself, what do I have to do to cos A cos B to force it to be one? And you know that if you divide anything by itself, you're going to get one. So if I divide cos A cos B by cos A cos B, they're going to cancel to give me one. OK, but what I do to one piece of the equation, I have to do to it all. So, in fact, I'm going to divide everything by cos A cos B. OK, how do I remember it? I remember it because of the location of that one. OK, so so let's do that. So it's sine A cos B over cos A cos B plus cos A sine B over cos A cos B all over cos A cos B over cos A cos B. There's the one that I wanted. OK, minus sine A sine B over cos A cos B. OK, 
So I hope that makes sense. I literally just divided each of the four pieces of that by cos A, cos B. Why that one? Because I see there's a one up there and that forces that to be one. Okay, so straight away, there's my one. Okay, and then you can see that I need tans all over the place, okay? But remember, tan is sine over cos. So anytime I have sine over cos, I can write it as a tan. Okay, so let's take each of these pieces one by one and see what we can do. Well, cos A over cos A straight away cancels, okay? Cos B from the top. <laughs> Thank you, Kira. <laughs> No bother to me to make a mistake. Right, thank you. So cos B, cos B cancels. And that's how I get my tan A. Do you see it's sine A over cos A. So sine over cos is my tan and my angle is A, okay? So there's my first tan A, okay? My plus in the middle, let's have a look at him. Cos A and cos A cancel, and you can see I sine over cos again, except this time it's B. So that's where my tan B comes out of. Over, we have our one there. Let's have a look at this one. And I'm also keeping an eye up here to see what I should be expecting. So tan A, tan B, so I'm not expecting anything to cancel here. There is a sine A over a cos A, so that's a tan A. And there's a sine B over a cos B, and there's my tan B. Okay, and then Latin, I can't remember what it stands for, quite easily done, but it means proven. Okay, so that's my, what I think, easy proof of, of this one. Okay, with no learning off by heart. Okay. So this is the questions we've been doing this evening. So find all the values of x for which sine 3x equals root 3 over 2, not as less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 360. Okay, um, not essential that you draw the diagram, um, but I'm just going to draw it anyway. Let's see, did I get it right? So that's one cycle, two cycles, three cycles. So I just went a little bit too far. I don't need him. Okay, so what did I do there? You see the way it was sine three X? Well, I drew three cycles. So back to where I started. That's one cycle of a sine wave. There's cycle two, there's cycle three. Okay, how did I know to start at zero? Well, sine zero is zero. So that's how you figure out where you have to start. And that's 360 degrees. So this value here, like we did in the theory, the value in front of X here tells you how many cycles in a 360 window. Okay, root three over two, I'm just gonna put him into a calculator just to decimalize it so we get a better idea of where we are. So 0 0.866 is roughly up there because I know the range of this is one because there's no number in front of sine. So one and minus one is my range. So I'm looking for that angle, that angle, that angle, that angle, that angle, that angle. Okay, so what are all these X values which gives me root three over two or 0 0.866? Okay, so that's the background to the question. Absolutely not essential that you're able to draw this. I'm only linking the theory we, we did tonight with the question. Okay, so the first thing I work out is my reference angle. Okay, and you do this by getting the sine inverse of both sides, okay? So you'll end up getting then 3x being equal to the sine inverse of root three over two. Put that into the calculator, sine inverse of root three over two, and it's 60 degrees. I made sure my calculator was in degree mode because it says degrees. If that said radians, I'd change my, um, calculator to radian mode. Okay, so next thing I need is cast. Why? Well, the, the number itself, root three over two, tells me the size of my reference angle. The sign, S-I-G-N, the sign in front of root three over two, tells me the location within cast. Okay, so where is sine positive? That's what I'm wondering. So sine is positive here and here. So quadrant one, 
quadrant two. Okay. So in quadrant one, I can't say that tonight for some reason. It's 60 degrees. Okay, it's zero degrees plus 60 degrees if you want. So that's in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, it's 180 degrees minus 60 degrees is 120 degrees. Okay, um, and qu quadrant two is always 180 degrees minus your reference angle, always. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is write them in the general form. Okay, so I'm literally following the exact same steps we followed in our last question. Okay, um, so in general form, I have um, 3x being equal to 60 degrees plus n360 degrees and 3x being equal to 120 degrees plus n360 degrees. I'm going to divide across by 3. Why? Because I'm solving for x, not 3x. So x is equal to 20 degrees plus n120 degrees. X is equal to 40 degrees plus N120 degrees. Okay, so to tie it right back to our diagram here now, I know that's my 20 degree angle. I know that's my 40 degree angle. I know my next one occurs 120 degrees up from it, up from the 20 and 120 degrees up from the 40. And then I know the next one occurs another 120 degrees up and another 120 degrees up. Okay. Um, so the next step then, n is equal to zero. So I've done no rotations. Let's find out my angles on the first um, cycle. So n is zero, which means this goes to zero. And the same here, this goes to zero. Okay, let's do one full rotation here and then let's start again. Okay, so now we're finding the two angles in the second one. So the N120 is X is equal to 20 degrees plus one times 120. So we've one rotation done and now we're into the second one. So that's equal to 140 degrees. And in this one, it's 40 degrees plus, I have one rotation done, 160 degrees. Okay, and N is equal to two. How do I know how many rotations? Well, it's that number there, three. Okay, so three rotations and normally two values per rotation. Okay, so N then is equal to 20 degrees plus two times 120 degrees. Okay, I've done two rotations and now I'm into the third, I'm 20 degrees into the third. So that's 240 and 20 is 260 degrees. And this one is 40 degrees plus two times 120 degrees, 240, 280 degrees. Okay, so your answer is 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 140 degrees, 160 degrees, 260 degrees, 280 degrees. And you can see, okay, they're 20 apart, but there's 120 degrees between them two, 120 between them two, 120 between them two and them two. And that's exactly as it should be because um, the sine wave is cyclical, okay? So it repeats, okay? It repeats itself at even steps. So that's how you figure out all the values of X for which sine 3X is equal to root three over two. So what does that mean? It means you can take any of these values, sub it in for x, okay? And you will always get, and get the sign of it, and you'll always get root three over two. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.